All right, this video is going to be another conceptual overview without really doing a lot of math of something called a flyback diode. And this is something you care about as a mechanical engineer. Again, this series is intended for non-electrical engineers kind of taking an intro circuits course. Something you care about specifically because you might be designing circuits using a microcontroller that control motors or other inductive loads. So if you see the phrase inductive load that means something like a motor or solenoid something that has a coil of wire inside it that generates a magnetic field and acts as an inductor so your inductor symbol can look either like this or like that be careful not to get it mixed up with the pure zigzaggy resistor symbol so it's kind of loopy we talk about inductors earlier in this video series and you might remember i have an equation for an inductor v equals l di dt so a quick recap of inductors before we get to the diode part here and this equation means that if i have a very very large change in current for an inductor so a large value for this derivative that is going to induce a large voltage across the inductor and that can be bad for example if you have an inductive load that is just sort of happily humming along so say we have a circuit with a battery, an inductor, and there's some little bit of resistance in series with the inductors, just so we don't have zero resistance and infinite current, but pretend that resistance is small. So we have a circuit that's just kind of happily chugging along with a closed switch and some current flowing through this inductor and resistor, but then we suddenly open the switch. Okay, so at time t equals zero, we open that switch. What is going to happen is okay this switch just opened I had some current flowing through my inductor so there's time there's current and I tried I had some current flowing along at some constant value and I tried to really abruptly shut it off so I have an open circuit now and oops I want to have I equals zero because I opened the switch and no current can flow. Okay, well, what did I just warn about? I now have a very, very large negative value for this derivative. Okay, I went from some constant value down to zero. I have a really, really steep derivative right there. And that is going to induce a reverse polarity across the inductor. So whereas previously my sign convention for current for the inductor and the resistor all kind of lined up and positive current was flowing that way, I now have this huge reverse voltage spike across the inductor, and that is going to cause sometimes an arc across this gap. So I'm actually going to get a spark there, and that can cause heat and damage my switch. The mechanical analogy here that I've used a bit in previous videos is if you think of inductance like mass and think of force kind of like voltage and current kind of like velocity and then inductance is like mass so this is kind of a rough analogy to a mechanical system if i have a mass or an inductance that is just cruising along at some constant velocity and then i hit a brick wall right i i am that's kind of the equivalent of opening a switch and saying i'm going to just very abruptly have my velocity come to zero right bam your mass just hits the wall then that is going to induce or in order for that velocity to come to zero require a very large force in the opposing direction on the mass so a very very big force and in the mechanical world obviously that's going to break stuff think of it kind of like that here i have some current that's happily flowing along and if i just want to instantaneously open the switch then the current's not happy it wants to keep going just like this mass wants to keep going through that wall so i'm going to get a spark across the switch I can prevent that by adding something called a flyback diode. So I have my circuit with my switch closed. I still have my inductor and my resistor, but now I'm going to add a diode facing kind of backwards across the inductor. So when the switch is closed and current's flowing, this diode is reverse biased and no current flows through there. Right? So that is zero. As again, we have previous videos covering diodes. A diode acts like a one-way valve for current, so it blocks current from flowing in that direction. All the current is going into my load, my inductor, and everything is fine. What's interesting now, when I open the switch suddenly,
something different happens. So I now, again, kind of the inductor wants to have that large reverse voltage spike induced across it, but doing that is going to now forward bias this diode and allow it to conduct. So I now sort of have, I don't know if the mechanical analogy is kind of like an off ramp rather than the mass slamming into the wall, it kind of has a ramp that will let it safely coast to a stop as rather than arcing across the switch, that current can now just kind of flow around in a circle here and eventually dis so I should have included some, maybe the resistor over here in this diagram in series with the inductor. So it's not gonna flow forever because it's going to dissipate as heat. And even ideal components like an ideal inductor and an ideal diode in reality have some resistance, even the wires connecting the parts here. So that current can kind of safely flow here and dissipate as heat while the voltage across the inductor cannot reach that huge spike because of how it's connected to the diode. Again, we looked at a voltage clipper in an earlier video where we talked about diodes where no matter how big the voltage of the source got, the voltage across the diode or the output of the circuit was clipped to the forward voltage drop of the diode. So we kind of have the same thing here. So instead of getting if we plotted the voltage across the inductor here, where it was gonna be zero because the derivative of my current is zero, but then I have this huge negative spike where the derivative of the current approaches negative infinity, the diode is going to effectively clip that off and pre prevent this big negative spike and give the current a safe path to dissipate. So that is why, again, when doing, for example, microcontroller projects, you might many times when driving motors see directions saying put a flyback diode across the motor terminals like this. Make sure you don't do it the other way because you don't want to just always have current. If I did this, then my current would always be flowing through the diode and not through my motor when the switch is closed. So it's in the reverse polarity or reverse orientation and that just helps you protect your driving electronics. We haven't talked about transistors yet, but this could be a transistor instead of a mechanical switch helps you protect other more sensitive things in the circuit, either from being instantly destroyed from that large voltage spike, or even if it's something kind of more mechanical, like a mechanical switch, you're gonna have pitting or damage and heating from those sparks that probably won't destroy the switch instantly, but can wear it down over time. So again, not really getting into actually sizing these diodes and the different types and what actual part number you would pick here, but as a mechanical or civil or chemical or whatever engineer, now you know what a flyback diode is when you see that phrase used. They might also be called freewheeling diodes. I'd have to double check. Oops, always doesn't like it. I'll just jot that phrase down. Freewheeling diode, or you'll see freewheeling current used to refer to this current that's kind of dissipating in a loop here. And I think flyback diode is the most common term that you will encounter.